I'm actually shooting this intro with the iPhone SE2 at HD, so let me know how this looks and sounds. And uh, by the way, I am bringing back my higher quality A-roll. Shooting on an iPhone has just been so convenient, especially as I've been finishing up second semester. I just actually took my final, you know, major exam tonight. So I'm up kind of late shooting this, and this is just super convenient to shoot and then airdrop to my computer where I edit it. So yeah, long story short, that's what's going to be happening. But today, we're going to be doing a gaming test uh, with the SE2. Of course, as you may know, it features the A13 processor, the Beast SoC from Apple in this affordable little form factor. So that's super cool. And we're going to see just how well it pushes the games that you recommended to me last time I did a gaming test with my iPad Pro 2020. But before we continue here, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions as the YouTube algorithm likes that and will help push my content to more people. And if you are a recurring viewer, go ahead and click the bell icon and enable all notifications. It does help the channel out a lot. So all the apps have been closed and I think we're going to start out with an oldie but a goodie Minecraft Pocket Edition, one of my all-time favorite iOS games. It's been around since I've been like 10. It's pretty impressive. So I have a Xbox controller here that we can use. So I'm going to click A to play. Uh, I'll actually scooch this phone up a little bit. Um, let's load this world that we have here called iPhone 11 because this phone is actually restored from a backup of my iPhone 11. So we'll proceed. And as you can see, that loaded up very, very quickly because the A13 is a monster of a processor. Um, so we can fly around. And I found that uh, with an Xbox controller, just, I don't know, like the navigation or just the camera movements are a bit more choppy. But um, other than that, I mean, this is no different in experience from like my iPad Pro 2020 or my iPhone 11 Pro Max. It's very smooth. It just got smoother, actually. And let's break a couple blocks here. Oops, I'm building. I think I have to switch up the controls because it's confusing me. But um, and despite the screen size, I'm actually enjoying my time using this with the controller because my fingers aren't covering like a good quarter of it. I can actually see what's going on. So if you do game a lot, I would totally recommend picking up an Xbox controller or a cheaper alternative here. So yeah, I would say Minecraft Pocket Edition is running the best it really can on this device because if you think about it, we have the iPhone 11 Pro's processor, but not its display. It's lower resolution. It's not as big. It's not as bright. It's it's not as hard to drive, so keep that in mind. You're really taking advantage of the A13 here. Next up, we'll open Asphalt 9. This is another game you guys recommended, and I love the way it looks, and I had a lot of fun playing it with my iPad Pro 2020. So here we go. I'll click A to play. This game also works with a controller. All right, so here we are. This game looks great. Even on this small display, I can drift here maybe? Am I forgetting how to drift? There we go. There we go. Um, okay. I don't know if I'm actually playing with real people, but regardless, I am really, like I said, loving the graphics here. The pre-game footage or whatever you want to call it, like the cutscenes look excellent. And yeah, the lighting here, everything is running just amazingly on this device. And like I said just a moment ago, the fact that this device doesn't have to push a giant display that's you know even higher in resolution with this monster processor just makes it a really great performer. Kind of like people were saying with like the OnePlus phones back then where um, they wouldn't have like a 2K display, but they'd still have like a Snapdragon 800 series processor. I think the same can be said about this device. It's just really, really snappy and will run pretty much any game just amazingly as we'll see throughout this test. Next up, we got a light game, Mario Run. I think this is popular on the App Store right now, which is probably why I downloaded it. So we'll play real quick. All right, we'll start a little game here. Oops, so I suck. That's just, what? Okay. The speakers on this device are actually pretty decent. Of course, not like iPhone 11 quality or iPhone 11 Pro quality, but um, they're stereo nonetheless, and they should be enjoyable when you're playing games just like this. This is a very basic, you know, 2D, sort of 3D-ish title. I mean, not really, mostly 2D. So this is running very, very well. No drop frames ever with something like this. Even like years down the line, I think. I mean, the iPhone 10, the iPhone 8, the iPhone 7, probably an iPhone 6S could run this just fine. So yeah, I mean, if you had any concerns about these kind of games, don't because the processor in this device is just so overkill for it. Next up, we'll load Call of Duty Mobile, which might just be my favorite mobile game right now, especially with an Xbox controller, and uh, we'll sign in as a guest in a second here when it loads up. Looking hella smooth. Of course, this is pre-match, but still, I'm loaded into a server. 
and I'm probably gonna perform more poorly because I'm used to playing this on like an iPad, so don't judge me. <laughs> like, <laughs> why did I call that? That's so sad. Oh my god. Like, it's harder to see the enemies because, like, I'm not like as close to my phone as I'd like. Hmm. Oh, I feel so confident right now. Yes. <laughs> what is going on? I can't aim. And there's like auto aim too, which is so sad. Oh no. Oh no. Someone's in here. No. <laughs> this has never happened to me, I swear to God. If you watch my previous gaming videos, I've wrecked people in this game. But for some reason, maybe, maybe the fact that it's 2 a.m. is the reason why I'm doing so bad. Or maybe it's because I just took a four hour long... E econ exam but regardless we're playing we're gaming i need to kill somebody before we move on to the next game here otherwise i'm gonna just not be happy with myself and that's my cat in the background by the way just scampering up the stairs so my bad where are you people there we go there we go i oh man that was a lot harder than it should have been uh, uh. You know, this happens to me in every first-person shooter. I just start hip-firing, and it's just stupid. You need to stop. Okay, hold on one sec. You need to stop. I'm sorry, my cat is just insane. Um, she was underneath the treadmill, and I just wasn't having that, and now she's here once again to sabotage <laughs> another video of mine. But do I mind? Kind of. Do I really? I don't know. She just kind of runs the show here, so. <laughs> All right, so I think we've covered uh, Call of Duty here. Next up, let's attempt to open Oceanhorn 2. Oh, okay, so yeah, that's just not working for whatever reason, uh, so. Oh well. Next up, we gotta play PUBG Mobile. How could we not? And I forgot that this game does not support controller, really. So here we are in the lobby, and maybe you're thinking, like, is this uncomfortable to hold if you're coming from a bigger phone? And, I mean, it's definitely an adjustment, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I do prefer a bigger phone, but this is by no means, like, cramped or uncomfortable. Uh, and even though I'm used to using a controller as well, which shows more of the screen, um, 4.7 inches is not, like, super tiny. Not so long ago, this was pretty substantial, and I'm gonna stop talking because everything I'm gonna say is gonna sound like an innuendo. <laughs> so the match is starting in 15 seconds. Okay, we, uh, can I get out? Yeah, I'm gonna land right on this little house down here. Probably meet somebody there, too. And here we are. All right, and let's open up the door. Alrighty. What do we got here? Okay, cool. I have a gun. That's that's a start. Um, and obviously, I'm not going to try to do well here just because I want to move on to the next game. But yeah, I mean, here, you know what? I'm just going to double check my settings and see if I have everything enabled. Let's go to graphics. Let's enable extreme. And let's do ultra HD as well. Oh, coming soon. Okay, so can I do HDR? Cool. Okay, apply. So let's get back into the game here. So I killed somebody, cool. And yeah, it looks better. You know, the grass is grassier, the sky is bluer, whatever. There's more contrast. And the A13 is handling this just fine. Because once again, we have a lower resolution display with this beefy processor. And that's one of the advantages you get with the iPhone SE 2. Unlike, once again, the iPhone 11 Pro or the Pro Max, you don't have this really huge 6.5 inch or 5.8 inch high resolution OLED display to drive. So that is, once again, a positive quality of this phone. Even though it is smaller and even though the display is inferior and even though this phone has an older design. It makes me think that this phone is like designed for like mobile gamers in a way. And I'd really love to see an SE Plus, but apparently that's coming like next year. So yeah, PUBG Mobile is a great experience. You can turn on all the graphics, everything, and it will still look great and run great with this phone. The second to last game we're gonna open is Legends, Shadow Lord, whatever this is called. Shadow Gun Legends, all right. So I have my controller connected. All right, so we're in the hub. Cool, let's load up a little game here. A to continue, all right, here we go. Mission objective. I saw a little stutter there, but this was the same experience I had with the iPad Pro 2020, which in ways has a better processor than this phone. The A12X is still, or the A12Z, which is basically the A12X, is a really powerful chip with even better multi-core scores. Um, but here we are here. 
Let's shoot some bad guys. Smooth frame rates here, although it's not like perfectly 60, like I said in my iPad Pro video. But again, like the hardware here is the best to run this game. I don't think there's any better in a phone right now. The A13 pretty much still takes the cake, even when compared to the Snapdragon 865 and other processors from other companies. Oh, we gotta shoot this, oops. So yeah, if you play this game, I don't doubt it, you'll have a great experience with the SE2. And finally, the game that everybody is obsessed with still, Fortnite, oh boy, uh, let's open this up here. I was really happy when I had to download some eight gig update or whatever, that was just mwah. Connecting, let's do it, let's connect, okay? So we had some lag spikes there for a second, but um, not really anything now that we're loaded in. Here we go, the wall's destroyed. Excelente, I'm being shot at, cool. Oh boy, oh boy. Do, 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 I'm blinded by the lights. Da, 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 da. I think that I'm gonna settle right in here. And before I like play this game, I wanna see if the settings are at maximum or whatever. How do I open this door? Uh, mobile frame rate is locked. Oh, you know what? Here, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna quit the match or I'm gonna leave. All right, now I'm gonna adjust the settings. So settings. Oh yeah, max it out at 60, that would be good. So yeah, I mean, 60 FPS, Fortnite, high settings, all of it. Of course it's gonna run well on here. 813 is amazing. And yeah, my conclusion is if you're a mobile gamer and you don't need the iPhone 11 Pros or the iPhone 11's screen or anything, you're not into OLED, you don't need the best camera setup ever, um, then this phone is definitely the best contender out there. I mean, once again, A13 is really unrivaled in the world of SOCs. Uh, like I said, Snapdragon 865 is still beat out by this. And I love the fact that it's in this affordable little form factor. And that about wraps things up here. I hope this gaming test was helpful. I'd really appreciate it. Once again, if you leave a like on this video, comment. If you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, and subscribe for more content like this, stay tuned for some iPhone SE2 comparisons. I'm gonna compare it with the iPhone 10, the iPhone 8, the iPhone 11 probably, probably the 10R as well, and just other content pertaining to this phone. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.